Thank you, Ijoma, and welcome to Sports News. Nigeria professional league side Abia Warriors FC have unveiled their new Brazilian coach, Rafael Everton, ahead of the new season. Coach Everton earlier today signed a two-year contract with the management of the club, being given the task of improving the performance of the team in the upcoming season. The former manager of FC Fanyuba is confident that with total support, he can lead the side to a continental slot next season. The end of the season, the team qualified to to continental ticket. Yeah, the team have good players. Uh, I see the one week the training have good players. I believe he input the tech, uh, the tactics, everything. The players work very good. I believe this. But Meanwhile, the Nigeria women's under-20 national team, the Falconets, are looking forward to the FIFA World Cup qualify against Morocco in November. After beating Tanzania 9-0 on aggregate in the first round, the Falconets will be aiming to repeat another gold fest against their North African counterparts. The Falconets are expected to leave for Morocco next week for the first leg scheduled for the 5th of November, while the return leg will be on the 17th. The FIFA Under-20 World Cup will be hosted by France from the 5th to the 24th of August next year. And elsewhere, America's Venus Williams this evening produced a vintage display full of guts and determination to grind out the 7-5-6-7-7-5 victory over Jelena Ostapenko in their white group encounter at the WTA Finals. Williams managed 11 of 20 breaks of serve in a match that finished just one minute short of the record at the Singapore Indoor Stadium. The American, twice a Grand Slam finalist in 2017, missed a match point in the second set, but came out on top in the 69th minute, third set, which included six consecutive breaks. Meanwhile, third seed Carolina Pliskova is the first player to qualify for the semifinals of the WTA Finals in Singapore. Pliskova, who was impressive in a straight sets win over Venus Williams in her opening game, was equally imperious against Wimbledon champion Muguruza as she broke twice to race through the first set in just 26 minutes. The Czech won 6-2, 6-2 in 62 minutes to win the white group with one match remaining. And on that reason, we end on sports for tonight. I'm Barum Tony Ranta, Andy Delma. We'll be back with that. Thanks a lot, Barum. Kenya's rerun is only a couple of days away, but attention turns to the Supreme Court, which has to rule on whether or not it should be stopped or postponed. The petitioners are asking the court to clarify its 2013 interpretation of the Constitution that if a candidate drops out, the whole month-long process should begin again rather than simply holding a rerun. This is the case in Kenya, as opposition leader Raila Odinga has taken himself out of the race, saying he's not sure it would be free and fair. He was even encouraging supporters to stay home on election day. Today they postponed, in protested that is, in Kisimu, who were dispersed by the police using tear gas, water cannons and bullets. According to the Constitution, the vote must be held before November the 1st. And China's Xi Jinping will now be known as the country's most powerful leader after Mao Zedong. On the last day of the Communist Party's Congress, members voted to enshrine Xi's name and ideology in the Constitution, elevating him to the level of founder Mao Zedong. The move means that any challenge to Mr. Xi will now be seen as a threat to the Communist Party rule. Previous Chinese Communist Party leaders have had their ideologies incorporated in the party's constitution or thinking, but none besides founder Mao Zedong have had their philosophy described as thought, which is at the top of the ideological hierarchy. And the European Council President Donald Tusk says it's up to Britain to determine if there's to be a good deal or no deal in the divorce talks. He was addressing members of the European Parliament in Strasbourg, saying whatever the final scenario, the remaining 27 member states would remain united. Talking at the same plenary session of the EU Parliament, European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker said the EU executive was not negotiating with London in a hostile way and assumed that the EU and Britain will reach a fair deal on Brexit. 
And the main news again. The National Assembly today resolved to probe the reinstatement of the former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Pension Reform, Abu Rashid Mena. And President Buhari today cautioned ECOWAS on the push for a single regional currency and asked countries to take into consideration their varying economic conditions as well as the lessons unfolding in the EU. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Humiato. Good night.